Okay, take two. So the setup that I have here is so precarious. When I went upstairs to get the batting, apparently I knocked one of the wires, which threw me offline and I didn't even realize it. So, starting over. Uh, hi, I am um, uh, doing my special Wednesday stream from my parents' house in Maryland. It is my second home and where I use as my base of operations when I have conventions on the East Coast. Uh, we have Awesome Con this weekend, and then we have too many games next weekend, so I will be hanging out here and using my base. Uh, today I'm going to be streaming for uh, how to pin and sandwich your quilts. Uh, pinning is a method that I do. Um, I like to pin my quilts. There's tons of methods out there to sandwich your quilts. Make sure you research them all and take a look at it before you make a decision of which one you want to do yourself. For today, I apologize about the lighting. Lighting kind of sucks. Uh, I was only able to bring one of my lighting setups with me, so it's got the yellowish tint of the... This is what it looks like when you have regular lights <laughs> and not the actual studio lighting. So the lighting's weird, but hopefully you can get the gist of how I pin my quilts. I normally pin in a much larger space at the Family Center where I can get about um, 30 quilts done within a three hour period, 30 to 40 quilts. I will be lucky if I get two or three done tonight because I have to do one at a time and it's gonna be a lot slower than the Family Center one. Uh, but it's a space, so yay. Uh, yeah, set up, oh, I opened this. I got these in the mail today, super excited, my mega Android patterns. So yay, I will have those at AwesomeCon and Too Many Games this weekend and next weekend, so if you're looking for patterns, uh, I've got those. Um, yeah, I think that's all the, the pre-work stuff. So, okay, first, clean the floors. Make sure the floors are 100% clean. No dirt, dust, grime, hair, whatever, clean, because we're gonna be putting things on the floor, so you're gonna make sure. Here is batting that I just opened, I just took out of the plastic. So, first step you wanna do, is measure. So this is the quilt that I'm going to be pinning first and the roll of batting, you can get batting like this by the roll either at your local quilt store, sewing store, you can actually buy a certain amount of it. Um, you can buy, sorry I'm just looking at the, the thing, that's cool. I didn't notice that one before. Anyway, so um, you can, if you want to buy it by the roll, some sewing stores and quilt stores will allow you to do that. So just check with your local place. Uh, this is a king size roll. So if the batting from that end to that end opened up, is actually a king size quilt. So these are lap size though, not even twin. So what I do is it looks like I can get two this way and it's gonna be too wide that way all right so I'm going to do it this way side when you cut your batting and it's not perfect too so if I cut a little bit big it's perfectly fine all right where to put my scissors so I'm gonna cut it about oh, let's cut it about here and this is actually going to give me enough batting for two quilts and of course I've got to grab scissors that stink let me go grab my fabric scissors are my favorite for more scissors and you saw how I was struggling with those scissors yeah see how nicely these cut uh, and these are why these are my favorite scissors and this is why 
if you have a sewer at home, they yell at you if you take your their nice expensive fabric scissors, although these aren't that expensive, they're decently priced, and you cut paper or other things with it because it dulls it. See how nice that is? All right, so let's take this and set it aside. Now that I've got my batting cut, the next step is to lay out the backing. Now, there's hair and things on here from traveling. We're not going to worry about it right now, and I'll show you why. So, first thing you want to do is you want to take this and you want to uh, tape it all the way down. I use the Wide Painting Masking Tape. Um, Cantec is the brand of this one. I'm there, I find the brands really don't make a difference. I get it at my local hardware store, and I get them in bulk. Get the big old package of them. This is one that hasn't been started yet. Which is why it's taking me a little bit to peel it. There we go. All right. First thing you do is start with the corners. Now, whenever you tape corner to corner, you always want to pull and make sure it's nice and taut. Nice and taut, not taut. Same thing down here. I'm gonna pull. And down here. All right, now, top and bottom. Oop. All of a sudden it went loose. This corner came loose. There we go. Okay, so now top and bottom. And that corner came loose. And that's what happens sometimes. successfully taping a quilt, a backing, is going back and forth. So you notice how I went the bottom to the top, and now I'm going to go left and right. You want to make sure that it's even. making sure that your backing is nice and taut and taped down so that whenever you're pinning your batting and your top to it, you are not getting any um, wrinkles in the back. Because what this is going to do is it's going to prevent any of the backing to bunch up and wrinkle. on the 
take two. Uh, being at my parents' house, they ha have a few dogs. In addition to having a few dogs, they're also a foster for a rescue organization. So the dogs may be barking now and then. If that happens, if they continue to bark and I'm talking, I will stop talking until they're done barking. Sometimes you just, dogs are gonna bark. All right, and I put an extra piece right here because I felt it coming loose a little bit. And this side here could use an extra piece. next step. Uh, let's put that over there. Okay. Whenever I first laid this out, I said I saw hair, dust, dirt, things like that on here. And I said we're not going to worry about it until we're done with our first step. That's because we're going to roll. Just like when I'm at home, if I see any hair, dust, or dirt in certain things, I roll it off. We're going to do that now. So, I'm going to go through my entire backing and make sure there is no hair, dust, or dirt. Because just like whenever we do our binding, this is the, what I'm touching right now is going to be inside the quilt. So anything we do not get rid of right now is going to be trapped inside of that quilt. You may not be allergic to dust or to animal hair. The person you're gifting it to may not be allergic to dust or animal hair. But hopefully your quilt is going to be around for years to come. And if that happens, you never know if someone will have an allergy that will have it down the road. So, just like Persimmon said, roll it, roll it. And this is the nice thing. Whenever I have my big space at the family center and I do, you know, multiple quilts at one time, I will lay all of the backings out and I'll do all the taping and then I'll do all the rolling at the same time. It's just more efficient. And especially because this quilt is a commission. So I do not know if the person that commissioned it has allergies. I do not know if they gift it. If the person they gift it to has allergies. So it is super important. Now, you may have noticed as I'm rolling it, some of my tape has come loose. When that happens, just fix it. It's gonna happen. It's not a big deal. There we go, okay, we're good. Yes. 
I completely agree. If you have a nice quilt and there, there's nothing worse than having a, a big old fur ball inside of it. All right, so I've cut my batting. Now remember, this batting is folded over. Now, there's two different trains of thought for batting. The first train of thought is just go ahead and use it, especially if you haven't washed all of your fabrics before you, uh, before you put them in. It's not a big deal if you don't do anything to your batting ahead of time. Another train of thought says, what are you talking about? You have to wash your batting. Another train of thought says, no, 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 you don't have to wash the batting, but you need to fluff it. And how you fluff batting is you put it in the dryer with a wet um, tablecloth and just have it fluff for a while. Personally, I don't see any difference. There probably is a difference, especially for quilts that are being um, uh, submitted or being juried or something else. Mine are going to be used in a home. And so for me, making sure they're fluffed doesn't make a difference. And I subscribe to the school of thought of none of my fabric is pre-washed. So I don't pre-wash the batting. <sighs> I get a breath a lot of times when I do this, all the back and forth. It's a workout. All right, now. Oops. I have my backing, I have my batting, and now for my top. Now, you notice whenever, if you watched the stream the other day, whenever I cut the backings, the backings are a little wide, little tall. So, I like to square them up. I like to stir it in a corner and square it up here. go and from this corner do my initial smooth now what I'm doing is I'm smoothing the quilt out so I'm stretching this fabric out so there's no wrinkles there's nothing in here and I'm stretching it now for the t-shirts themselves I am stretching them a little bit because you remember for the t-shirts there's no stabilizer in here so they're gonna be moving all the time so I'm stretching it out as much as I can. And this is why I took my shoes off. Now, sometimes you need to pick up some of the fabric and shift it. And again, when I do my multiple quilts at one time, I'll lay them all out and smooth them all at the same time. And then I'll go through and pin them one at a time. Now, here we are. I'm also squaring my quilt. So at this point, especially with the t shirt quilt, you notice how as I'm smoothing, I have this. It's kind of crooked around some of the edges. I'm pulling and I'm squaring it up. There we go. All right. Now, the bottom here, it's a little crooked. I'm not going to worry about that until I'm done. Now, I said this is the pinning method. So, Pinning method, I use pins. And I use special pins. So these are special safety pins that are just for quilting. They actually have a curve along the bottom. They're not a standard safety pin. So if you do the pinning method, go and buy special safety, go and buy special pins um, from your local quilt or sewing store. They're a, they're a good investment because what they do is whenever I go to pin this, I allow it to scoop under, that curve allows me to scoop into the fabric, the batting, and the backing. And then I can scoop and go up without scratching the floors, which is super important. 
If you have a regular safety pin, it's not going to be able to scoop and you may scratch something. So at this point, I am now going to pin that top row. Now, you notice how I'm not worrying about the edges. All I'm doing is worrying about having one single row of pins here. Okay. Now, I'm going to work my way. I have a single row here. I'm going to work my way down towards the bottom. I'm doing two things. I'm making sure that, number one, whenever I go to quilt it, I'm not going to hit any of these pins. Number two, so I'm putting my pins in a strategic way. Number two, I'm putting enough pins so that it's not going to move because we do not want the top and the batting and the backing to shift and move as I'm quilting because that's what makes puckers. Now, whenever I give my t-shirt quilt spiel, I say because I do not use any kind of stabilizer, you are going to get a little bit of puckering. Can't help it. Most of the time people say, not a problem. I would rather have it be soft and cuddly with a few little puckers in there. It doesn't have to be perfect, which is fine. So. At this point, for each t-shirt, I'm going to try to have at least two or three rows within each t-shirt. And I alternate them. So you notice how my first row, I just have a bunch of pins there. My second row, I'm alternating within that top row. And that's all I'm doing. So I'm going to go down. And now I'm alternating again. And what that's going to do, whenever I do my meandering, when I do my quilting, it's going to allow me to come down and do my meander and do my quilt between the pins. Some people like to, quilt, like to put their pins in rows. Some people like to, you know, just have a meet. Just do a haphazard. I like things nice and neat and orderly. So, uh, yep. I just have them like this. Is, and then I do this the entire way down. Now, as I move down, when you, I pick myself up and I move myself, I'm smoothing again. Because whenever you sit on the quilt, sorry, I just noticed this part had to come out a little bit, and I'm going to add another pin in there just to hold it. Okay, that side's fine. Whenever you sit on the quilt, it's going to automatically want to bunch together. So even though I did my initial smooth, you also want to continue to smooth as you move down. That looks like it's pretty good. It didn't move too much. Now, now that I showed you what I do for more efficiency, I grab a handful of pins. So I don't have to keep pulling it out of there. It's easier to just kind of move them along and then grab the pins. Now, whenever I do my quilting for this quilt, I'm not going to go over this number and I'm not going to go over any of these letters. So I'm going to actually move this pin up into the letters because I want to quilt as close to these letters as I possibly can so I don't have a large space without quilting. And the reason why I'm not going to go over these letters is because they are three extra layers thick. It's just not try worth trying to go through those layers change my needles, do any of that stuff I would need to do in order to safely go through the layers. So 
the pinning is uh, one of the boring things about quilting. Okay, let me shift again. looking at, yep, internet's still good. Because this is take two, because the first time the internet kicked out on me. So I just gotta keep looking over every now and then and make sure the internet is still going. There we go. Continue to alternate back and forth. Uh, yeah, definitely not the fun part, but it is essential. I've tried other sandwiching methods before. I've tried um, the the spray method where you've got the spray basting and for me it's just way too messy way too many fumes it's um and honestly it wasn't as fast um i find because i've been doing the pinning for so long especially when i do it over at the family center and with that large space i can zip through it without a problem and go pretty fast with it Right. I've also tried the, um, I call it the price gun method. There is a, a method that's got the little, um, a little gun with the little plastic thing you can shoot through just like with the price gun, where you do this and then you go around just shoot, 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 and do the whole thing. Now that itself is a lot faster than actually putting the pins in because you have to actually close the pins after. The two drawbacks to that that I found whenever I tried it. Number one, it did not have as tight of a sandwich like the pins have. Um, the sandwich itself I thought was too loose. Some people are fine with it. Uh, the other thing that I didn't like is whenever I finished with it, I had to actually cut all of the plastic and it was hard trying to figure out exactly where to cut those off. Uh, of course, I see you type something else. I'm going to go over and grab my... I should just keep this with me. Yeah, no, I agree that um, the spray is good on small stuff. Especially if you can get to a, to a fumigated area. Um, then the other method, of course, is the method I've used for small quilts, which I actually like for small quilts, is using um, applique paper. Uh, it's just, it's almost like the spray, but it's, you know, having the sheets and ironing it on instead of spraying it on. And I'm sure there's other methods, too, for basting quilts. See, it's, and the, I thought, whenever I first saw that gun, I'm like, I'm always looking for more efficient ways of doing things. I thought, oh, wow, that's super efficient. That's going to be amazing. I, I just didn't like it. It just, I felt that, um, I don't know, it's, I, I felt that my quilt was always shifting and moving, and I wasn't getting a good, um, a good a seal. Now you notice how I'm doing here is I'm actually shifting the bottom 
because the t-shirts themselves have stretched so it's kind of dipping down and the sashing is nice and straight so that hasn't dipped at all. So I'm just kind of pulling and smoothing. Now making sure as I do this row down here right along the sashing that my bottom level right here is straight because that is what I am aiming for. A nice straight bottom of the quilt. <laughs> structure is pinned. Um, now I'm going to go through and I'm going to pin the edges. Um, whenever I pin the edges, so I always make sure that I leave a little bit of space because whenever, as if you've watched any of my quilting uh, episodes, I actually like to um, sew down the edges all the way around just to make sure that I don't trap the backing in there and to make sure I've got a good seal on it. It's not something you're supposed to do, but it's something I do. And then, so I need to have space to do that as I go around. What is my father sawing? He's drilling or sawing something. I can hear the noise. So anyway, so whenever I pin all the way around, I want to make sure that I leave myself a little space. So I actually leave myself a finger's space between the pin and the edge. Now, see, my fur babies, my um, two of them, um, Alfred and Soleil, are still at home. I did not bring them. I did bring Marley. But all of the dogs that you hear barking, because Marley doesn't bark that much, unless he wants to play with the cat. All the dogs that you hear barking in there are my mother's dogs, my brother's dogs, and my mother's foster dog. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you missed my, uh, my introduction, my, my, uh, my welcome to my special Wednesday. Yes, I am at my parents' house in Maryland. I use their house as my base of operations for East Coast shows. So I come here and stay with them when I have conventions within a few hours of this area. And then I bring one or three dogs with me. I never bring just two because I don't want one to be alone at home by themselves without any other dogs. So I either bring one dog or I bring all of them. In this case, I brought one. I only brought Marley. All right, now I've done the entire bottom. Now you notice how the pins along the border are a little bit tighter, they're a little bit closer together than the pins around there, because the border is super important that this is straight, it's flat, and it doesn't flip up at all. Oh. I round the next side. This is why I said at the beginning of the stream, my legs, my knees, and my arms hate me the next day after I pin. So I just turn the corner. Again, I still have a finger's amount of space between the pins and the edge. And I'm pulling and I'm smoothing as I'm pinning. this and I just pick up my whole pile of pins and shift them with me. This is also why it's super important that you clean the floors and have a nice clean area before you start pinning and laying things out because I'm sitting on the batting that's going to go inside of the next quilt. 
So these clothes I'm wearing, I actually put on just before the stream and they were nice and clean. So that way I don't transfer any dirt, dust, or hair. And I'm actually eyeing to make sure I haven't left any pins behind. I tend to do that sometimes. But when I pick up the quilt to finish it off, so when the pins go flying, that's when I find them. Whenever I first was learning how to quilt, I was, um, I would come over here and use this space because it's a lot bigger than the space that I had in my apartment to pin all my quilts. And so I would convince my father to help me in the guise of if mom ever made a quilt top, she can't get down on her hands and knees and do the pinning, so dad's going to have to know how to do it so he can do it for her. Oh, yeah. No, he is... He's doing something with furniture because my brother's kids are going to come for a visit next week. So I think he's making sure that their room is, is nice and set up and everything is the way it's supposed to be. So I think that's, so he's focused. Yeah, you like that sneakiness? So my plan for this weekend and next weekend this weekend, I'm going to try out the um, the mobile Twitch, the IRL, on my phone, and I'm going to stream on and off while I'm at AwesomeCon, maybe whenever I'm talking to some friends or when I find really cool crafty artists, you know, things like that, I may pop into Twitch and stream it all just to do some testing. If it works well then I know I can stream our entire setup at Too Many Games. Because I know lots of people have been asking me how I create my monstrosities start to finish, so I wouldn't be able to show it to you. Almost done. Just one more pin, there we go. All right, so let me gather the remaining pins. I've been pretty good lately about grabbing a handful of just the ones that I need. Um, no, I cannot live stream. I cannot do it. I cannot sew or do any of that while I'm at conventions um, because I don't have the setup for it. There is no, um, I have to have a landline. I have to have a wired internet connection. I cannot do it wireless. It does not work. Which is why this is take two, because I could not get the wired connection to work at first. 
and it was trying to go off the wireless, and of course that doesn't work. So over the next two weeks, the app and other than this stream, the only time I'm going to be actual, oh, you know, YouTubing. Oh my gosh, why can I not process? Yes, I'm going to be putting those up on YouTube. Now, the, I don't know if I'll put the ones throughout AwesomeCon, the test ones, if I'll put them on YouTube, but the start to finish at Too Many Games, I will definitely put it on YouTube. What I can, I'll put it up on YouTube. Because I don't like people to have to feel that they have to watch it on Twitch or else they'll miss it. And all I'm doing now is I am cutting it all the way around, and I'm cutting it with about two fingers length, so about, about two inches, all the way around. Now you want to make sure you do not cut it close to the quilt, you want to leave that extra space, because you need that extra space when you're actually doing your quilting. So I'll be videoing it on Twitch, and then, no, I'm actually going to be doing it live. I'm not going to take a video and then upload it to Twitch. I'm going to do them live. I figured out how to do a live stream directly from the phone. So if I'm doing a live stream at AwesomeCon, and if you say, hey, my favorite artist is over there, or my favorite uh, Twitcher is over here, go say hi, I'll be like, sure. Although hopefully I'm your favorite Twitcher, but um, yeah, I can I can answer questions. I can go around. In theory, this is going to be good. Again, in theory. Right. And then other reason why I use this tape is it does not damage the floors. So the painter's masking tape is the best one to use. It doesn't have the best seal, as you saw, I had to keep on uh, fixing it and adding more. But I would rather do that than be on the floors. Thank you very much, Persimmon. I appreciate the suck-up points. enjoying a nice cup of tea right now. <sighs> All right, now, <sighs> you can sit and relax for this next part. So now I have, I have laid it all out, I've smoothed it all out, I've pinned it, I have to close the pins. So, close the pins. I sit back against something and I close them in rows. Whenever I, uh, I first started quilting and I first started making sandwiches, I, I thought, why do I have to close the pins? It seems like an extra step that's not needed. I should just be able to put the pins in, take it to the machine, quilt it, and take the pins out. If I close the pins, I'm going to have to open them again after I finish quilting. So, now remember, um, I'm mostly self-taught. I uh, didn't have anyone, you know, holding my hand. Hey, question, yeah. And if you have to go, thank you for popping in and watching. Go to bed. I appreciate it. So, yeah, no, seriously, I questioned having to close the pins. So I actually did carry it without closing the pins to the machine, tried to quilt it, and then take the pins out. Okay, it's a bad idea for two reasons. Number one, pins are going to catch on each other and be pulled out on the way to the machine. 
Number two, this is a much more dangerous open area that you're now putting through your machine. It gets caught on the machine, it gets caught on your arms, it gets caught on your clothing. Yeah, it's, it's not a very good thing at all. So, yeah, don't question closing the pins at all. Close pins. It's much, much better. It's, this is a new batting for me, and it's for me, it's like the loft isn't as thick, but it's an 80-20, so I'm sure it keeps you just as warm. It's just a different, the loft is how thick the batting is. So this batting isn't as thick as the other stuff that I'm used to using, but I like it. It's, it's a lot, it's softer. It's nicer. Okay, so now... I've gotten one row done, so I'm going to fold the row and move the rest of the quilt closer. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Have get a good night's sleep. I'm surprised that you stayed up this late for me. So good night. I will see you hopefully sometime in one of my streams this weekend. apologize now uh, I cannot see because I'm doing all this and I'm not working near the computer I have the chat up right here and I have the I have it up showing me that yes my stream health is good but I can't see anything else so if I get any follows or donations or bits or anything else I can't see it until I'm done so after I finish this quilt before I lay out the next quilt I am going to go over to the computer and just to make sure that nothing's going on. I will thank anyone I need to thank, and then I'll move on to the next one. Yeah, because looking at the time, it's already 7.30, so yeah. I'll get two done. I'm sitting here finishing closing the pins on this. I'm sitting here thinking, going, this always goes so much faster at the family center. I'm wondering if I should even pin a second one here because it took me almost an hour to pin. They take me only about 15, 20 minutes each there. For more efficiency, I may just wait and do them all at the family center when they get home in two weeks. Because I, the whole point of doing this is showing you how to pin a quilt start to finish. And uh, I've done that, and so, yeah. I'm thinking I may st I stop after this one. Uh, and there's that one.
when I get this far, I normally just fold them this way. say thank you to spicy eggnog and sandman121 thank you for the follows i appreciate it i saw those uh this morning so i wanted to make sure that i told you thank you and i totally appreciate it so yeah you know what i think i'm done for the night just because i yeah it's not very efficient doing it here so i am going to finish and pin all these when i get home but I am going to upload this to YouTube, so this will always be a nice reference. So if you need to look back and see how you pin a quilt, this is how you do it. So, all right, so I'm going to say goodnight. I'm going to go get some, uh, some last-minute pillows made for the convention on Friday. It's for our setup day. So thanks for, uh, for joining me. I appreciate it, and I will talk to you guys this weekend.